Chapter 7, number 3, in Hitler's day, the Ram speaking about the pollution of speaking Lush and Hora. Or slander. That one is in violation of negative commandment and the the severe ramifications when one does speak. Ill of another, negative, where it has no constructive value. Amruch HaChomim. Sholosh Averis Nefrom Min Odom Bolom Hazer. The three sins, three transgressions, that one is retribution in this world, and he has no share in the world to come. There's retribution in this world, and he, he's cut off from the world to come. Avodos Kochovim, person is a pagan, an idolater. You don't believe in God. Gile Arayos, a person who is a violation of ancestral relationships or adulterous relationships. Ushvich has domin. And if one sheds blood, murder, one takes the life of another. We're speaking about somebody who does this deliberately. We're not talking about accidental. This person ultimately will pay the price in this world and in the world to come. He's, he's forfeits the share in the world to come. So listen to this. The first three are three cardinal sins. Idolatry, adultery, incest, and murder. And speaking ill of another where there's no constructive value to that information. And speaking Lashonara, it's the equivalent of all three combined. That's how serious Lashonara is. Now, let's understand. I speak, well, that's when person spoke once. At a turn about another person. Person, his daily, his involvement is, he has no compunction of the ramifications of his speech, and he speaks irresponsibly. He speaks in a context of where it has no value, and it's all negative about other people. He says, that person is worse than every one of those areas of transgression individually. It's the equivalent of all combined. Now, how do we even relate to it? You take a life. We say saving a life is like what? Like saving the world. Idolatry, we understand. You believe God is not in control of the world. It was given pagans, the deities. The deity is determined, dictate existence. Adultery. It's a very serious breach of relationship. The man's a woman's a married woman. And how do you engage with that woman? Okay. But Lashonara was the person is a gossiper and he has no compunction what comes out of his mouth. He speaks irresponsibly. Not only it's the equivalent of one, it's the equivalent of all three combined. If you have a power grid, and the power grid supplies energy to all locations that need electric power. And you have hospitals. You have people on life-saving equipment. And if the power goes down, all these people die. And a person shuts down the power grid and endless people die because of this. What is the liability of that person? You kill one person is one thing, but he just flicked off the switch. He pulled the switch. The power grid is not there. Besides the level of inconvenience on humanity, on society, but many people are life-saving equipment. Whatever the equipment may be, these people are going to die, and they do die. So you say, you know something, that person, it's not, he, he, he killed one person. 
He has no value of humanity. Humanity, the world means nothing. He's willing to destroy the world, and he he's, couldn't care less about the consequences of his behavior. Person does an adulterous act, it's that one person. Idolatry, it's you as a person. You believe or don't believe. Murder, you're taking that life. But if you do one act, and that one act takes the world down, it's a whole different, it's a different reality. The Chavetz Chaim writes in the introduction to his work Chavetz Chaim when he speaks about the laws of speaking, trans transmitting information which is not permitted. Now, just the background to understand that, to appreciate it. Initially, when God created the world, did he create the world with the attribute of mercy or with the attribute of justice? We begin, we know that the appellation Elohim is the appellation for the attribute of justice. Yudke Vovke Hashem is the appellation for the attribute of mercy. Initially, when we speak about God creating the world, the appellation we find is the appellation of Elohim, which is the attribute of justice. But when it comes to create man, we find there's God coalesces the attribute of mercy into the attribute of justice. Justice is meted out in the context of mercy. Why? Because since man is prone to fail, if the measuring rod would be precision, exactness, man would not survive. Because man is prone to fail. So for the sake of survival of the world, that the world should not be destroyed, God introduces the attribute of mercy to give a person another chance and another chance, endless chances. And you can always do tshuva. You can always repent and be reinstated. But if you would have the attribute of, just, of, of justice where the liability is delivered immediately and the person's reigned in a bit ability, a person doesn't have a chance to recover. You cross the line, you get zapped immediately. And if that would be the case, there's no future to existence. What is the media What is the medium attribute of justice? Every one of us have a flawed record. There's nobody perfect. King Solomon says initially in, in Kohelis, and Sadibarsashayastov lo yato. There's no tzaddik in existence that does all good and never sins. There's no perfect person. If you're perfect, that means you're an angel. You're not a human being. But as a human being, we have our skeletons in the closet. We have shortcomings, and it's part of our record. So if it's part of our record, why aren't we prosecuted for it? The answer is because there's the attribute of mercy. That mercy says, God says, although you're not perfect, it's okay. I'll give you endless chances to make to correct the record. But I'm not going to allow those imperfections, although they may have been deliberate sins, to be brought to the docket to be prosecuted in court. That's God will not allow it. The only day the record is fully audited, and who's the auditor of the record? Who's the prosecutor of the Jewish people. The prosecutor of the Jewish people is Satan. Satan is the prosecutor of the Jewish people. The same power which entices us to sin, that same power comes to prosecute us for the transgression which he himself entrapped us and drew us into that sin. He is the prosecutor. And he firsthand brings the case to court before the heavenly tribunal. And nobody could prosecute as Satan could prosecute. Whenever Satan, Satan continuously attempts to prosecute throughout the year and speak about the Jewish people, could you imagine you have a beloved son and you love your children and a stranger wants to come and speak negatively about your children. You say to the person, 
what you're sharing with me, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want you to speak negatively. My children, as you see them, on the whole, they're doing pretty well. Nobody's perfect. It's okay. I don't want to hear their slight shortcomings. I don't want to hear about it. It's okay. Oh, I'm going to give them every chance in the world to make corrections of where they failed. But in the whole, I'm okay with them. Therefore, God shuts down the prosecution. He silences Satan. Rosh Hashanah is the only day of the year, which is day of judgment, where God allows Satan to prosecute, to audit the whole record. Every aspect. But on Rosh Hashanah, we have something special. We have the merit of the chauffeur, which is the, the story of the Akeda. When that blast of that ram's horn is heard, immediately, that merit is so overwhelming, it shuts down Satan. Satan is silenced. So although it's the day of judge, it's the day of justice, and we allow God allows him to prosecute, but as he's pr prosecuting, which is the Muslim service, that's exactly where we stop blowing the chauffeur. And we stop, we introduce this overwhelming positive saving grace. Sutton has nothing to say. And he's silenced. Once he's silenced, we're able to continue. If he's not silenced, then we have a problem. Because he continuously prosecutes the record. So the Chavetz Chaim cites a Zohar. The Zohar says like this, whenever Satan comes to prosecute, Hashem says, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear you speaking negatively about my children. What about the Jews themselves are careless in this area? And they themselves point out failings among one another where it has no constructive value. Did you hear? The man is a thief. The man was, was convicted. The man was indicted. He's not that bright. He can't be trusted. What is the value of that information? He's not what you think he, he is. What's the value of that information? It has no value. <clears throat> if you want to hire an employee, and you want to get a recommendation. Of course, he has to be have a certain type of background, whether it's his integrity or his capability, his competency, okay? So the person is sharing information for constructive reasons. Is he qualified for the position? Then I'll hire him. If he's not, I'm not going to hire him. But how am I supposed to know? I have to go seek out the information. So the person who shares that information with me, because that information is vital whether he's employable or not, and the person is sharing with me for that reason, that's not talking negatively about a person. That's talking constructively to prevent this person hiring somebody that he's only going to have aggravation. He's going to have a financial loss with the person. It's permitted. What about you're going to say things which are unrelated to that? Has no constructive value. Why, why speak negatively? And people do. By people they meet, they say, we got to catch up. We haven't spoken in a while. The, what's new? And the person unloads. And this person says, now that I've shared with you what's going on, tell me what's going on. And they go and they thrive in this sharing of this negative information. Now you're on, now you're up to speed, knowing what's going on in the community. But what's the value? Nothing, no value. All you spoke was negative. When Satan sees this going on, he comes before Hashem and he says to God, you don't want me to speak negative about your children, but just look the way they're behaving themselves. Each one is sniping at the other. They don't value one another. They speak negatively about one another, although it has no constructive value. And Satan goes and hammers away this point. And you know what Hashem says? If that's the case, you, I will allow you to speak negatively and prosecute that record. And the moment God gives Satan the floor that he's permitted to prosecute the, the record, God forbid, that's the attribute of justice. Then God reigns in on us. And that's what we speak about in next week's parsha, The tochach, God forbid, the curses that come upon the Jewish people if they misbehave. That we talk about Holocaust. If there's been Odom if Jews love one another, 
They don't speak negatively, even though they're not perfect. In other areas, God says, I'll give them endless chances. But if they themselves have a breakdown between relation man and man, and they snipe at one another, and they speak negatively about another one, if that's the case, I can't shut down Satan. When he wants to speak negatively, I allow him. And the moment he does, his speak negatively, he's, he's, he's auditing the record. Once the record is audited, then we have, unfortunately, we have really serious problems. And that's what we're boarding on Holocaust. You know, when a person goes and he files his income tax, the count says, you know, we don't want to raise any red flags. So I advise you, don't take that deduction or we'll Word it a certain way, because if you word it the other way, when you take that extra, you'll be thinking you're saving an extra few dollars, but the aggravation you're going to cause yourself, it's going to open for an order. It's not worth it. It's going to occupy your time, and you may, and if they're looking, they'll find something. That's the reality. So what do you do? You keep, you keep below the radar. You keep below the radar. Don't ruffle feathers. When we speak about other person, ruffling serious feathers. That's pros we're prosecuting one another. So now we can appreciate. A person goes commits adultery, God forbid. A person commits murder. This terrible thing, unconscionable. Okay, he has no share in the world to come. Ultimately, he'll be punished. But when a person speaks loshen hara, you fail in this area. Now you're allowing Satan to open up to give him entry to prosecute the Jewish people, because all the Jewish people were one entity. And as a result of that, speaking of and Ra, failing in this area of speech, it's the equivalent of all three combined. It's more severe than that. So not only will you be punished in this world, you will also forfeit you during the world to come. There's a person who, it's not he speaks once in a while. He gossips, he speaks negatively. His daily fare of speech, every day has a major dose. And he's just like you have a, a sewage pipe, which breaks and just hemorrhages all this infectious waste, this person speaking this kind of talk, he's activating all kinds of negative forces. Because of that, therefore his level of liability is worse than the liability if one violated all three cardinal sins combined for that reason. Yeah, when do you start teaching a child to, about Loshan Hara? The time writes that... You know, if a person has a bad habit and then you realize that that behavior is unacceptable and now you want to behave appropriately, once you're ready, it's habitual, you're always going against, you're going against the stream. You're going against the grain. Yeah, always, it's always in a suppression mode. You have to suppress what you're, what you're, what you're addicted to. It's like an addiction because it's a bit habitual. What about a person he says from when he was a child, whenever the child wanted to speak negatively about someone else, the parent went and said to the child, it's not acceptable. And the parent never allowed the child to develop a habit of speaking about other people unless it had constructive value. So this child never developed that negative characteristic of pointing out failings of other people or valuing failings of other people unless it was within a very specific context which is constructive. That child, now when he learns the laws, it's easy for him to implement them because he's not going against a bad habit because he never developed a bad habit because the parents never allowed him, would not tolerate. I'll give you an example. Certain people, certain families, they pride themselves in their honesty and they always speak the truth. The parents, the children. Why? Because when the children are young, if the child would ever lie, and not say the truth, the child was actually was reprimanded by the parent. As you would reprimand the child, deny the child a privilege, whatever it is. But people who value honesty, they don't want their people, their children, to speak only the truth, to behave only within the context of truth. So if you raise the child that way, even once in a while, a person's tempted not to say the truth, it's easy for him, it's easy for him to take control and only say the truth because he never developed that that bad habit of always lying. People lie without any compunction. It's almost natural. 
It's only if the consequence of lying is severe, like perjury. You go to prison, maybe then you want not going to lie. But other than that, you're lying. People lie without any level of hesitation. They're not accurate in what they say. There's more lie than truth. But a person has always been taught as a result of his upbringing only to speak the truth. That person will, will usually always speak the truth. And even if he's tempted not to speak the truth, but he understands the wrong thing, he'll be able to speak the truth. He's not pushing a boulder up, up a mountain. But if all your life you were speaking non-truth, and now you've come to the realization of how terrible to speak lies, now you have an uh, inclination to, to say not truth. Now you have to want, here you have a boulder coming to crush you, and you have to push it away that you shouldn't be crushed. That's exactly what we're dealing with. So therefore, the Chavetz Chaim writes, the parents are culpable for not raising the child properly to always speak only what's positive and nothing negative about other people. And unfortunately, people don't live their lives that way. They thrive on speaking negative at others that somehow gives them, reinforces their own sense of value by pointing out somebody else's failing. Therefore, it's, 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 it's fair of the day. I speak the truth. You may speak the truth, but what's its value? Oh, but there's nothing wrong. There's plenty wrong. Pointing out somebody else's negative failing where it has no positive value, you have no right to paint that picture about that other person. If one speaks irresponsibly and he activates prosecution on the Jewish people, so why are people subject to illness? Why are they dying? Why, are they, why is there anti-Semitism? Why is there whatever it is? These are consequences of the prosecution. You know, if you track what happened October 7th, before that event happened, Israel was on the border of almost a civil war. The level of animosity between the right and the left do a story of cases on Yom Kippur in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is not the most Haredi community. And the secularists went into the service on Yom Kippur and they disrupted the service. Could you imagine Yom Kippur, the most solemn day of the year, they come in wearing bathing suits. They start tearing up the sedurim, the prayer books pouring water on the people and ready to get into a fight on Yom Kippur. Could you imagine? You don't understand. This is a private This is a private, pro private uh, residence here. What are you coming in? They could not tolerate Jews being observant. That was the animosity they had to them. It was strength to the point it was, the it was ready to boil over. You know what God does? I'm going to teach you how to unify. And only God was able to clear the air. The atrocities of October 7th unified the Jewish people. Secular, not secular, doesn't make a difference. Either we're all in it together or God forbid, it's over. But that was a reaction. God's reaction to this breakdown of relationship between brother and fellow brother. So because they misbehaved among themselves, Satan says, look, look the way they treat one another. They're beating, beating one another up in a way which is unconscionable. If that's the case, I'm going to prosecute that record. God says, go ahead. The moment he starts prosecuting that record, forget about it. You implode, explode, and that's October 7th. And since then, we're still feeling the pain, the casualties, the injuries. It's not to be believed. People's lives have been destroyed forever. Even the ones who, who, who survive, if, they're, if they were wounded, 